good to see the retention rate has stayed relatively high for this part of the afternoon. I'm Brian Green. I'm a Deputy Associate Principal at University of Strathclyde with an overall remit for learning and teaching. And my colleague, Ainsley Haney, is a project officer for the work that we're doing at the moment in and around learning analytics. What I'm going to try and do in the over the course of the next 10 minutes or so is really just set a bit of a context for <laughs> the way that we've sought to develop at Strathclyde. Um, we think we have been making some good success with it, but it's been very much small steps at an introductory stage. One of the things I've picked up this week through the workshop sessions is the importance of establishing context and identifying key stakeholders within the process. And so with that in mind, some details about University of Strathclyde. We are the third largest university in Scotland, third out of a total of 19. Um, about 24,000 students and approximately 3,500 staff. So certainly by Scottish and by UK standards, a relatively large university. This is not a history lesson, but the information is relevant in that we were founded as the place of useful learning in Glasgow. And we're probably one of the few universities where we remember what the founder's vision was for the institution. And in the context of what we're talking about today, we do reflect back on that regularly when it comes to strategic planning and it influences what we do. The other thing that I think is worth mentioning in terms of the context for us at the moment is that we're undergoing a major investment in the student experience. Strategically, for the last seven or eight years, the emphasis has been increasing research performance, which I think strategically has been the right thing for the institution. But I'm delighted that we've now looked more towards investment in the student experience. There's a few, a few examples there. One of the most exciting ones that we got approval for is to look at how we might develop a learning and teaching place project. And some of what, what I've picked up this week, I think, has been really, really helpful in that context. Also by way of our education context, the numbers there pretty much speak for themselves. We've got a very large number of undergraduate and postgraduate programs. Um, also, research programs where we balance taught input alongside obviously the research itself. There's an idea there of the student headcount. We also have put on the slide an indication of the modes of delivery. And you see there that the balance is pretty much in terms of attendance on campus. We're doing some strategic work at the moment to try and shift that balance, but it's predominantly students attending on campus. The bit that I've left to the end is indicators around retention and also our progression figures. And you see there, we take in a large number of high quality students and we don't tend to have a retention problem. And I'm not being complacent about that, but again, if we look strategically in terms of how we take things forward, we don't need to look at learning analytics from a retention perspective. Um, and that's helped shape our thinking. In terms of my role as a deputy principal, one of, the, one of the things I try to do within learning analytics is ensure the best fit between developing it alongside where we, where we are heading in terms of education and, and our distinctive <coughs> mission. I've talked about the place of useful learning. Our current emphasis is as an international technological university. Again, we're very strong in the STEM subjects, and that frames how, how we plan as an institution. We also have, have a good track record in terms of in innovation, and technology engagement, local and national economic input, and we've made a considerable investment in our staff and under the banner of being a socially progressive institution. And so I'm, I'm not just doing the Strathclyde sales pitch here, that has also implemented on how we've taken forward some of the analytics pilots that, that Ainsley's going to speak to in a, in a minute or two. 
So sticking with the, the strategic theme, one of the part again of my role was to try and bring that strategic oversight to what we do in learning analytics in order to help move it forward. Um, and so key to that is looking at how do we align learning analytics activity to some of the wider educational activities. And we're operating within a very, very complex education and education development environment at the university. This is just a, a relatively quick attempt to, to indicate the overall range of different education focused activities and priorities. Some of these things like, for example, quality and enhancement, widening participation, investing in the university's learning and teaching state, state there, there have to do's for a university at the moment. That's, that's our day to day bread and butter activity. But we try where we can to put an education enhancement flavor and focus on that. And we're increasingly trying to work more towards a better quality offering in terms of educational technology, looking at different markets, looking towards the skill set that learners now bring to university, which is not the same clearly as it has been in the past, and looking towards a range of different methods, as I said earlier, perhaps more online, certainly more blended. And it's within that overall technological digi digital education framework that we, we've located what we're doing in learning analytics. So it's a for me, it's a really, really important part of our business, but at the same time, it's part of a much bigger picture. And one of the challenges for us is to try to see where we can we can fit learning analytics in a way that maximizes the benefit for everyone. The other thing that has been key to what we've, we've reflected on as we've looked at analytics, it's made us think much, much more about data within the institution. Now, we had a lot of stuff going on at a variety of different levels in terms of how we use the range of different sources. Some of this is quite specifically Strathclyde Speak. Sunbird is our management information system. We also have a series of key performance indicators, as most institutions do, and we report against those to government. We take in information through the, the UK National Student Survey, through the destinations for leavers for higher education. That's the high level stuff. We generate a lot of information <coughs> through staff and students at a subject level. But increasingly, we're thinking towards the sources of data that we can develop at a localized student-focused level. We use that to report to a variety of different sources and outcomes within the institution and the externally. Um, some of those are indicated here. I'm not going to dwell on those in any detail. The sources for those reports of the recipients of those reports are also indicated there. Much of it internal and also a lot of it increasingly external. Now that's important for us as an institution. It makes sure that we continue to know ourselves, identify areas that we develop. The other thing is that within the Scottish sector, there is a wider enhancement focused approach to quality activity. And we are, we are about to enter a new phase a, probably a three-year phase of a national enhancement theme which will be focusing around how the data and metrics enhance the education experience. So we've started unpacking all of this with a view to engaging with that theme. But we've also done it in a way that has generated outcomes within our education activity. And th this is, again, a number identifies a number of areas that we're working in at the moment. We've tried to adopt a frameworks approach, for example, to NSS activity. I think the way we're going with learning analytics, that might, might be the way that we tackle things moving forward. We increasingly use data in a more substantial way, in a more robust way for our internal review processes. And we're accountable to the Scottish Funding Council, the external government agency, in terms of how we report back to those. So the data, the data picture for us is a very, very complex one. But I'm pleased to see that we, we view learning analytics as very much part of that wider strategic development for us. 
So that's the background. In terms of the stakeholders and how we've engaged more widely with learning analytics, I've tried to highlight here some of the key um, meetings, timelines, milestones and engagement that we've had. Um, since I, one of the first things I did when I, I started as Deputy Associate Principal was I attended a meeting of, it's a group called University Scotland and they have a learning and teaching committee, so each of the universities contributes to that. And there was a small input at that meeting in this thing called learning analytics. And it, it, it struck a chord with me, especially in light of some of the strategic priorities that I, that I had identified earlier. So I decided to pursue that a little further. We developed a bid, it was part of the, the Higher Education Academy in the UK, which was unsuccessful. However, what it did do was collate our thinking as an institution at that point in time. Through that process, I'd also, I'd, I'd seen the, the, a lot of the background papers from some colleagues who are in the room, and also SOLAR and LAC became key components within our journey. So I attended LAC at Poughkeepsie in 2015. I was really, really reassured by how welcoming the community was, how engaging selfishly. I thought this is, this is a shortcut that we can take to try to get up to speed. And one of the sessions I remember most was Belinda Tynan, formerly of the OU. Belinda's um, keynote presentation, was, I'm not going to try to explain the formula, but it was based around how analytics was used linked to baseball, but also to answer key problems. And it gave you two, two ideas. One of them I'll, I'll explain a little later. Then, because partly it was aided by the fact that LAC 2016 was 50 miles away from our university, so we were able to get a larger group of people to attend that. And I, as I've mentioned at a, a previous session, We've also tried to engage very closely with JISC, who have been really helpful and supportive in terms of the work that we've been doing and to be able to share our thinking with. The other thing, and this is in terms of knowing your stakeholders internally and, and having an awareness of the institutional culture to develop, I looked as well at the, le the, the internal reporting mechanisms. One way for us to make sure we can take this forward is to get learning analytics into the university business system. And I don't mean business in terms of the numeric side of that. It's embedding it within some of the key university activities, linking it into development and governance. So I've updated Senate on the fact that we've been piloting some activity. I'm a member of the university's education strategy committee. I chair the quality assurance committee. So I make sure learning analytics gets the profile it needs to have within the institution. The other group that I went to speak to, and I wasn't sure of the reception on this one, but I went and made a presentation at the student parliament. Um, that was probably the most daunting thing I've had to do to date. I went thinking I might get a bit of a hard time on this, but actually our students were really, really supportive. They asked questions around the ethics, but were completely reassured by the, the information that, that was transmitted to them in that sense. The other thing we then did was I wanted to make sure that we embedded our anal analytics activity as part of wider staff development, partly because I don't think there's huge capacity for it within the institution, but also it's a good way of raising awareness to colleagues, especially colleagues who are coming into the university and who might think they can take things forward. We also have an annual conference, and going back to Belinda's presentation, it was a keynote speech at our conference in 2015. And I think if one single event kick-started things for us, that really was it. And we've continued to provide a series of updates as we've, as we've moved through. Again, one of the, one of the other areas that, that became clear within this is, if you reflect back to the, the, one of the numbers slides earlier on, we don't have an issue with 
with retention or progression. So the question, what, what's the problem you're trying to solve with this? At this point in time, we, in general terms, those three items are the ones that we're trying to focus on. We'd like, as, as we all would do, I suspect, to improve student outcomes. We have a challenge around student assessment and feedback. Students tell us we're not as good at that as we should be. And despite being a well-performing research intensive university, we still manage to admit a large number of students from more challenging backgrounds. And so we want to pay particular attention to them within what we do. Um, other key actions, we've embedded this within the work of our learning enhancement strategy. Sorry. And we've established a series of pilot projects. Right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just quickly whiz through some of the stuff. But um, basically, um, we established a learning analytics strategy group. And one of the things which has really worked for us is we've used a team approach. So we have two deputy associate principals. Um, there's myself as a project officer and there's some managers within an education enhancement team that are also within that. So we've got a large team approach to decision making and ways of moving the project forward. Um, we've also got a steering group which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, I'm the project officer who's on Seconman. Um, and to give you a bit of a flavour of my background, I actually have got a PhD in forensic science. Um, was a teaching fellow within the university for four years, then moved into a learning technology post for two years, um, and basically I've been pulled in to kind of lead um, analytics at Strathclyde, and, and that was really a strategic move as well because we're really wanting to try and focus this on learning and teaching and how we can support students, and we felt that staff um, and students would respond to someone who's been in that environment and, and had to deal with those daily issues. Um, so I don't really have any kind of formal data qualifications or any big kind of um, kind of data science um, kind of expertise but what we've found is, is engagement with staff and engagement with students have really responded to the fact that I was in their position only a, a short time ago um, and also when it comes to some of the pilots that I'll quickly talk through um, you'll realize that the, the data hasn't really played as much of an important part in the pilots um, as it has for us it's more about what that what we can use and using it as a kind of proof of concept for moving forward. Um, one of the first things that we got involved in when I started was the JISC Learning Analytics Readiness Assessment. Um, and this looks at four key areas to basically decide whether your university is ready to um, progress to looking at implementing learning analytics. The key recommendation of that report, um, as you can see, was to implement a number of pilot projects and that's something that we've gone on to do. Um, and also, just to give you an idea, this is what you get from JISC and the readiness. This is a kind of breakdown of it. And this is Strathclyde's um, outcome. And we were actually very pleased to realise that technology was already ready for us and that we had a little bit of work to do in some of the other areas and that the pilot projects would help us do that. Um, but Andy Ramsden, who actually did our assessment, who works for Blackboard, um, recently published a blog, the link's here, and he looked at 15 other higher education institutions. Strathclyde's obviously aggregated into this result, um, but it actually showed that we were quite well positioned compared to some other institutions, so that was actually a really good boost for us for moving forward with learning analytics as well. Um, in terms of the pilots, we have a university which has four different faculties. So to include engagement throughout the university, we've taken a class from each one of our four faculties one from engineering, from science, for humanities and social sciences, and one from our business school. And the one at the bottom here is actually our organisational and staff development unit. Um, and this was actually a key one for us because the students on this course are generally new staff members to the university who are undertaking a kind of um, qualification and maybe higher education or knowledge transfer um, or, um, a, um, or research. Um, so this is actually kind of trying to get awareness at the new people coming into the university and seeing if there's a way that we can get them excited by learning analytics which can then feed through their departments as well. Um, so very different classes, some which are online only, some which are face to face um, and really it's about kind of trying to see if we can pull some data together um, in some sort of way um, and and really trying to see what we're getting from that, what kind of information that we're getting out from that. 
Um, we have a formal reporting structure, so each class would get a report, um, giving them very specific recommendations about what to do with their class moving forward. And there's some recommendations for the wider learning analytics project as well. Um, at the moment, um, two of our pilots are complete um, and have been fully evaluated. Um, the other three have only just finished as of last week and they're just moving into an evaluation phase. But some of the things that we're getting back from these pilots um, is that students have responded really well to an individualised approach to interventions by email, but one of our classes is quite large and the time aspect for a staff member to be able to do that really isn't practical. So it gives us a way of thinking about our next step is to investigate how we go down that route and how we can overcome that challenge of dealing with trying to keep something quite individualised but dealing with something on quite a large scale. So it gives us a, a way of moving the project forward. Um, students also like to be able to view progress within the class um, and although they perceived a positive change in their behaviour, they felt they were um, a bit more responsive and a bit more active in the class, um, their, their actual data didn't really tell us that. So it was actually, so they actually felt they were performing better even just by simply seeing their progress. So that was a good thing for us as well. Um, the timing of the intervention is important. We got some feedback from the students that they felt that when they were um, getting that information, it was really important. Um, and the intervention strategies, although they may not impact on student attainment, what they can do is um, leave to an improved learner journey. And as I said, as Brian's already mentioned, our focus is on student experience. And if even their learner journey is improved, that's still really good for us. Um, so some of the ways we've done some internal um, and external engagement. Um, so we have oversight with our strategy team. Um, we also do regular updates to faculty and teaching committees. Um, we said we embed learning analytics into our learning enhancement and staff development. And our learning analytics steering group, this is something that we've established. Um, we have membership on this, which includes deputy associate principals, deputy director of our education enhancement team, we've got managers, we've got myself, We've got our pilot participants from each of the courses. We've got someone from our library, someone from Business Intelligent. Um, and we've also got our Vice President for Education from our Students Association. So we've got a student actually sitting there on their board making and help shape the decisions and where we go with the project. And I've got two slides. I will do them in 30 seconds. Um, so basically what we have is we've got external engagement and this is what we found has been really key to the project as well. So we've um, engaged with the, the, the UK Open University, with JISC as we've already said and with the Sheila project. Um, we're also hosting networking meetings and we've been approached to host some other different meetings in the future. So we're getting um, engagement from the sector as well and, and we're trying to do that. Um, so where we want to go next, so what we've done so far is really kind of decide where we want to go with the project and the further evaluation of the pilots will really help shape that. Um, so the first thing we want to do is really finish off the analysis but also we want to hold a dissemination event for staff to tell them about the pilot project and what we've done and what that information has given us so that we can again start to kind of be quite transparent about what we're doing in the project. We're looking at technical infrastructure and investigation, so starting to think about our data warehouse, how we're going to establish all the, all the data and getting that into one place. And a big thing for us over the next academic year is actually fostering engagement, so having focus groups with staff, focus groups with students, finding out what they want from learning analytics and then trying to see how we can actually help and implement that. Um, so last slide. Um, so what's really worked for us has been engagement. So really being quite open, being transparent, opening up difficult conversations with students and with staff, both internally and externally. Um, it's really been important to have professional colleagues involved. So having representatives from the library and from Business Intelligence on our steering group. Um, we have a relatively small resource. The resource pretty much is me to kind of lead this project on and a little bit of money for travel um, and for engagement. So even with a very small resource and with staff members who are really, really keen to get involved and move things forward in the university, we feel we've already managed to achieve a lot. And effective team working and partnership, as I said, we've had really done a good team approach here and we feel that's been really successful for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
I don't know, is they're sneaking quite a lot of extra time there. Um, <laughs> because they've obviously got so much to tell us. As, <laughs> as you can tell, the transfer window has, has opened. People have started uh, coming in from other sessions. I'm going to suggest one question and then otherwise buttonhole Brian and Ainsley outside the room. And David, if you want to come and set up now. I'm, I'm a little bit curious about libraries and, and how you cooperate with the libraries. The, the reason why I raised that question is that in Norway, it seems that the library will not be giving any data to learning analytics as far as the librarians are concerned. Mm -hmm. So uh, I saw the library was, was listed as a data source and I saw it was on the, 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 the library is on the committee. So tell me a little bit more about that. Um, the, mem the member of staff who's, who's uh, coordinating with us is, is a fantastic member of staff and she's very open and willing to get engaged not just in learning analytics but other projects within the university. Um, and we already have some data already that we use for things such as... But there's, there's no way that, that that is kind of uh, uh, critical or consensual? So no, we've got an excellent working relationship with our library. Okay. We've not had any issues at all. And in fact, the e-resources stuff is data that's not being collected at the moment. But and then, they've given then, us then I would ask, could you think of any reason why the Norwegians are... <laughs> 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 Okay then, thank you once again to Brian and Ainsley.